Well, hello, my beautiful friends. Yarnhead Rhyme here, and we are going to be working on our graph this morning. I know I said I was coming on at five yesterday, and I would have, but I just couldn't keep my hands inside the screen. So that video didn't work out too well. What do you think about my new uh, emergency crochet kit? Uh, yeah, I, it needs some help. These are supposed to be some fabric letters that you iron on, and... I think they were made by Lee Press on Nails because they, uh, it, it, the iron on isn't really working. I'm gonna have to glue them suckers down. Anyways, I thought that was cute, and, and truly the reason I'm showing this for such a long time is I'm hoping, I'm really hoping they will use this for my thumbnail because YouTube sure likes to pick the most awkward and ridiculous face I could possibly make for my thumbnail. I'm so tired of it, like, really. I gotta figure this out. Okay, so uh, let me show you the, what we are working on today. Remember, just as a reminder, this is our finished project right here. And um, I was talking about 3Ding this little bunny butt, and I want to show you some of my ideas. Um, I did get into the yarn closet, which is not organized, and I could not find any pipsqueak in there. But I've got some of this, which I think is pretty and has a little bit of sparkle to it. I just don't think it's ruffly enough. This one is brown, so unfortunately with the pink bunny, I don't really like that one. I really think I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to take this and trim it up a bit and give this bunny a big old butt. This is going to have a puff ball. I think it's going to be super cute. I like making graphs and then uh, 3Ding them because it just adds something else to the project. It just makes it even more lively. And if you have got a family member that has um, Alzheimer's or dementia and they like to um, pick, this would also be good for that. You could um, 3D this. You could add some flower buttons here and here. Uh, maybe put some little beading on this and then turn this into a, um, a lap gown or a wheelchair blanket and then they can pick at it. Just make sure everything is secured, um, you know, down really good. So anyways, all right, so that's what we're making. Uh, this time I'm doing mine with cotton. And what we need to have is three bobbins with our background color, two bobbins with our bunny color, and one bobbin for our bunny tail. This graph, if you guys haven't got the graph yet, um, I know I've had, I think I've had about 50 people or so request um, the graph. And if you have not gotten the graph yet, but you would like to join in on this project with us, send me an email at uh, yarnhagryan at gmail.com and I actually have it on my phone now, so I could just transfer you the, um, the graph. And I made it myself, so there's no copyright yada yadas involved here. It's my graph. And yes, you have permission to do whatever it is that you want to do with this graph. So here we are. This is the one we're following off today. Um, I like this because it's super simple. You look at the color and just do that many stitches. That's all it is. So um, what we started with was a chain of 40, a uh, chain of 41, because that one is the turning chain. And then I did uh, 40 from left to right, 40 from right to left, 40 from left to right for seven rows. We did 40 single crochets for seven rows. And that's where we're starting. We're gonna start right here. So the next part of this is uh, we have to do 13 stitches of our background color, 13 stitches of our bunny, and then 14 stitches of our background color. And uh, I'm gonna do that with you right now. I'm actually gonna count these out prior to making the stitches. That way, when my mouth starts talking, I won't get lost in my stitch count. So, like I said, here is our seven rows of single crochet, and this is my background color that I'm using. It is, I love this cotton, and the color is called Brights. This is from Hobby Lobby, and I am going to be using my favorite hook today. This one is a size I and a 5.5. I do get these at Hobby Lobby as well. They are like $2.99, I think. And the key to this hook is you have to do this and get this hook ready to use it. If you don't, it will get stuck in your yarn. Once you get it ready, it like it must have some type of coating on it originally when you buy it. Uh, anyways, once you get it all smoothed out like that, then it will slip in and out of your yarn uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna count this out. 
our first set of stitches is 13 of our background color. So let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. There we go. I'm going to stick this hairpin right there. Then our next count is 13 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. All right, there we go. We should have 14 stitches left. We're just going to make sure of that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We are all ready to go. So uh, this is a small graph. Let's say this was a blanket and a larger graph. If you want to be able to sit and do this um, and not have to count every single um, time, like count it out, count it out, count it out, you can pre-do your graph like this. Um, and then that way you just know when you get to one of these, that's your last stitch and you gotta do your color change. It does uh, make it a little bit easier. What I'm trying to do with this is make this not intimidating for you guys so that you will want to um, get involved and work on some graphs of your own. So again, we are using bobbins today. These ones are also from Hobby Lobby. You can use a toilet paper roll. It works out uh, just as well. And with the toilet paper roll, um, you would just wrap it around the toilet paper, cut a little slit in it. The locking mechanism, which is just a slit, is what is important. So that's the important part. Okay, come on Ryan, start crocheting, get busy. Okay, I'm gonna really try to keep my hands inside the frame today. Let's see if we can do that. So anyways, how was your guys' day yesterday? Mine turned out pretty good. I uh, had a nice day at work yesterday. I uh, got a lot accomplished and so that always feels good when you get, you know, your job done and you have some good, um, good relationships at work, good things that happen. I totally attribute that to my good hair day. I had a pep in my step yesterday for sure. All right, so now we're where our color change goes and this is what I wanted to show you. Let me take this out. So here we are on our last stitch for our color change and we are going to need to bring in our next color and that is the yellow because that is the color I'm using for my bunny. Now on this color change, we're going to give ourselves a really long tail and I will show you why. So let me introduce this tail. Oops, there we go. And I am going to keep my... Um, bob into the back of my work. So let me lock it. That way this is, um, if I pick up my work, this isn't going to unravel. So locking it is important. So here we are. I am going to take my working yarn and lay it across my work and take my tail and I'm going to make my complete first stitch with the tail, the whole thing, all the way through. See, that was the tail I just used. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick up my working yarn and then I am going to finish with my working yarn. After I get down a few stitches, I'll go ahead and cut my tail because I just hate them. I hate the tails, all right? I hate them. So, bye Felicia, is gone. Uh, now this is important because what we just did is we locked in this, this yarn. It's locked. It's not getting out because this was our tail. So we now have trapped it. So you can wash this. It's not coming out. The only thing you may have uh, problems with is you might see a little peeker if you didn't cut it close enough to the next stitch. But otherwise, you're good. And for me, this is a game changer because I don't have to weave in any extra ends. I'm really only weaving in the, um, you know, at the very end of my work. What? I think I lost my stitch counter, so let's just count these ones out real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We need uh, 13 on this one. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and there we go, 13. Jeez. Right off the bat, Ryan. Right off the bat. Okay, so now. Let's go ahead and lock this one. And our background color is trapped over here, guys, remember? So we can't use that one anymore. So we do need to introduce a new bobbin. This is why we have three bobbins for our background color available to us. 
and we have two of our bunny butt because we are going to have to use them. So let's introduce this color uh, and we will do the same locking mechanism here. We are going to hold our tail yarn and make our complete first stitch with the tail. There we go. It is done. If you have any little um, areas that need to be tightened, do that when you're close to that stitch. Because if you wait and do that after your row is complete, you're not going to have all the access that you need um, to your working yarn or your tail yarn in that area later on. So it is important that if you have anywhere that needs to be tightened up, go ahead and tighten it up when you're close to that um, stitch. All right, get out of here. Deuces. There we go. I just really like not having to worry about extra little pieces of yarn hanging out all over the dang place. All right, here we go. Figured that if we did a few of these rows together, then you would feel comfortable in trying this and completing it. It is only 40 rows, so it's 40 stitches by 40 rows, so it's um, fairly easy. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this with me and these guys are just going to just hang out where they're supposed to be. I like to keep mine to the front of my work like this. That way when I get over to it, I know where it's at. Uh, so let's go over here. And on this row right here, let's get our graph back down. Oh my gosh, you guys just saw my grubby robe. That's all right, this is not a beauty contest. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go 13 of our background, 15 of our bunny, and 12 of our background. That is our next stitch count. So let's count this out. 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And... Maybe I'll use a bobby pin this time. I do actually have like real stitch markers because look at this. Look what Nancy from Nan's Next Knox sent me. A Valentine's Day one. Isn't that cute? I know, right? But uh, for this, I just am going to use them only for a very, very brief period of time. So I didn't need anything too fancy schmancy. All right. Uh, we're going to go to 15 is the next group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And give me another one. Here we go. Get up in there. Okay, hopefully that one won't fall out this time. Okay, so let's keep on uh, stitching here. It is super awkward for me to crochet like this because normally when I crochet, my hands are like in my lap. So for me, my arms, uh, um, we're at the, we're at the makeup table, you guys, by the way, uh, with, with me, my arms having to be out in front of me in order for it to be picked up on the camera is very awkward, but I love you all. And we're just going to get through this, right? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I really tried this yesterday, I swear. And I had a pillowcase. <laughs> yeah, I was really, really fancy. I had a white pillowcase down and, uh, yeah, anyways, that one went to the trash bin. It didn't work out too well. You guys only saw probably half the video. All right. So there's our last one here. Let's take this bobby pin out. There we go. And I am going to go ahead and lock this yarn up here. I am. And then we are going to add in this one right here. There we go. And we are going to hide this because there's a stitch here in between where I needed to add it and where it was. So we're actually gonna slip our hook underneath it and go into that stitch where we need to put our next single crochet and we're going to hide that um like carryover we're just going to hide it and you can you can hide it again if you want i mean play with it see where you like it to be hidden that kind of made a little hole for me so I'm, i don't like it so i'm only going to hide it the one time and leave it there see 
it is just fine. I really like to use this bobbin method um, when doing graphs because I um, I don't really like it when there is a piece of, of yarn traveling through my stitches that is a different color. If the yarn was the same color, then it's, to me it's not a big deal, but not when it's separate colors. It just gets to me. Man, that other stitch marker, I shouldn't use the hairpin anymore because that really keeps falling out. How terrible. That's okay, I know where we were at. Okay. So, this one, we have one more stitch here. This is where we ended last time. Sorry. And again, let me undo this bobbin. I want to trap this yarn because I need to do this one in yellow. So, I'm going to just keep that yarn in here. There we go. Trap it into that last stitch. And then I'll lock this guy up. <clears throat> and it's trapped. And now we'll finish this with the uh, 12s of the remaining stitches. Well, Bear Bear is in the background, by the way, chewing on one of his toys that has uh, like some paper stuff on the inside. I'm surprised he hasn't got himself to that squeaky side yet and started going ballistic because that's usually what he does. Oops, come on. Get up there. There we go. Okay. So that row is done. And we're going to turn our work. Yay! There we go. Okay, what are we doing on our next row? This row is 11 of the background, six of our bunny, three of our bunny tail, eight of our bunny, and 12 of the background. This is the most bobbins and the most color changes that you are ever going to have on this entire project. So if you can do this row, you are golden. You are golden. So let's count it out and not use the hairpin as a stitch marker because that really was terrible. Okay, so let's go to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. If you're good at math and you look at this, you could actually just go, okay, I did 12 stitches of this color, so it would be one less. But since we are learning, we are counting. And we're going to go for 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There we go. Our next count is going to be three. One, two, three. We will use a piece of yarn for this one. There we go. Our next one after that is going to be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is another one where we're going to need to trap our yarn when we get there. Like I said, play with it. See what you like and which method you would prefer as far as trapping your yarn um, and do it that way. And if it doesn't bother you, you don't care about it either way, then just mosey along and just do whatever happens when you get there. This is the first one. So it is definitely not a big deal. And whatever it is that you make and you complete, you should be proud of, definitely. What our goal is with this is uh, the Creative Grandma and the Secret Yarnery came up with our new challenge. And our new challenge is the season of the granny. So we are supposed to be working with granny squares, granny rectangles, granny triangles, how, whatever we want to do. So since I love doing graphs, I'm doing a graph and then I'm going to granny the graph. And uh, if you guys are on this journey with me, you guys can do it too. I'm going to turn mine into an afghan or a pillow or something to that nature. And I think it is going to turn out great. All right, so let me go ahead and lock this. And it's up to you at how long you want these uh, 
your locking before you lock it. If you don't like them being close to your work, lock them a little further, but just know that when you go to flip, you don't want these to get tangled up on you um, or you're gonna have to take a minute to stop and untangle them. So that's kind of why I prefer doing them closer to my work and uh, just having it be a little bit awkward because I don't wanna be doing any untangling. Okay, so this one again has to cover, has to travel over a stitch. So we don't wanna pull it too tight because we are going to have to go back in there and, um, and make sure that we are picking that up so that we can hide the traveling. The traveling of the yarn. There we go. We got it. Okay, we're almost to the next stitch marker already. So let me pop it out. Now, this one is going to be our bunny tail. This is the start of our bunny tail and it is only three stitches long. And I know that seems like a pain in the butt for just three stitches, but we're gonna carry this yarn to complete our whole bunny tail. So once you add this in, you basically are going to, um, you know, you only have to do that once. You're not adding in these colors every single row. Once they're in with the bobbin, you're gonna use them that way. Okay, so let's go over this again. We're going to take our working yarn and lay it on our project and use our tail yarn to complete the entire first stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up back here. The entire thing. There we go. Now we're gonna travel that yarn and carry our, uh, and use our working yarn. There's stitch number two and stitch number three. Now this is only three stitches. I am not going to cut this one off because I may choose later to weave this in. Now, if you don't mind any little tails, if you keep these long and you go say, when we go to do this uh, tail part, I'm gonna show you this again. And you don't like the crispness of how this is or isn't, you can use that tail and you can actually sew it and you can make your work a little bit more crisp if you like to. So that's kind of why I like to weave these tails long because if I choose to go back, then I can do that. Some of them I am gonna do, and most most of them I'm not cut off, but some of them, I'm gonna keep this one long in case I wanna go back and um, crisp anything up on that tail. So let that one stay behind. Now we're gonna add the rest of our, our second bobbin for our bunny because this part of our bunny is already trapped. And these two are actually going to work up the whole side of this bunny. Let me get this out here again. This is gonna be the one bobbin. This is gonna be the other bobbin. And right here, I'm gonna need to decide if um, I, which bobbin I'm gonna use for this whole part. And then we will need to op introduce the second bobbin again to either do this ear or that ear. But that's, that's our goal there. Okay, so let's get this guy in here. Oops. Again, this is awkward because I just want to pull this to my to my lap. <laughs> okay, so we are going to use our uh, tail yarn to make that complete first stitch. I did this one super long, but that's all right. I am not one to worry about these wasting the little ends because I take them and I put them in this jar and then um you know when I make my voodoo doll that's what I use to stub it with I've only made one voodoo doll guys it don't it's not a thing I promise it's it's definitely not a thing I don't have like a million of them out and it's completely a joke <laughs> I am not a uh yeah sorry just a joke Okay, there we go. We're done with that. Let me go ahead and lock this guy up. Oh, look what I did. I have this yarn here and I'll do it the other way. You guys can see what happens. I normally would have hid him underneath this stitch like that, but I will show you because I did forget what happens if you do and what it looks like. And it's actually not too bad. Um, Maybe if you were using white and black, it would be, but see, that one didn't come out too bad. It's fine. You can't tell. 
you just got to play with it. See what, what preferences you like in carrying your um, little stragglers. And that only happens when you're scooting over by one or two stitches. You want to try and, uh, and hide that. I mean, you can totally cut it off and start it again. You have that option. Um, but when we're working with the bobbin, our goal is to hopefully try and work off that bobbin as long as we can without... Um, without having to reintroduce yarn all the time. Okay, so all these guys are trapped and we're just gonna turn this around here. That one's not trapped, there we go. Okay, let's see, we're gonna do another row here. Man, sorry about that. Okay, I have my, I have my comfy robe on this morning. Okay, so here is row number 11. On this row, we're gonna do 11 of the background, eight of our bunny, five of the tail, six of the bunny, and 10 of the background. We have this for a couple more rows, and then um, then you're back down to only the uh, three colors again. So we're going for 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. There we go. Oh, I was gonna use that other thing, but there we go. All right, after that, we need to go to eight. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And now our next one is going to be five. One, two, three, four, five. Basically, we are um, growing out our tail and our bunny rabbit. That's why these are going over by one stitch because we're widening that bunny butt. Uh, next is going to be six. One, two, three, four, five, six, because it's growing by a stitch. All right, there we go. And we should have 10 left. Let's go ahead and check it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We are still golden. Okay, so let's make sure we're in frame here. That would be terrible because remember, I don't do any editing. So if I flub, I flub, and it's real life, and that's what you see. And by the way, I do not have a cold. I keep sniff like sniffling like this, and I swear it is a nervous habit that I never knew I had because I didn't know I did that until I started watching back some of my videos, and I'm like, what are you doing? Because I'm not sick. I've never, I have not been <laughs> sick actually for about two and a half years. I have not had a cold or a flu or nothing. I take this stuff called um, Juice Plus and it is like, if you don't eat like all the healthy foods, it basically get, like introduces those vegetables and stuff that you might not be eating. It has a, I don't know, they're like ground up or whatever in a powdered form in a little capsule and it, I don't know whatever it's super it's super healthy and let me just say that I used to get sick a lot more often and I have not been sick in a very very long time since I started taking those and no I do not sell them uh where is I think I have a bottle over here let me see this is what it looks like it says the next best thing to fruits and vegetables so yeah I take this and it works it works I actually take one that's um that one the vegetable blend and I take another one that's the uh like the fruit blend and Jordan takes them as well and um Chris he takes them too and yeah it's pretty good I don't think Taylor and Tristan are on them right now but it does it really does keep you from getting the the common crappy crap that everybody gets Besides having the valley fever, um, Jordan hasn't missed school or been sick at all, uh, probably for a couple years. So, and the valley fever thing, that's not a, something you can catch. That's just a piece of bad luck there. All right, so we're gonna carry this guy over here and uh, trap him in. And what I'm doing is, see how he has this big old, string right here I'm gonna get under him when I go to do this stitch so he gets hidden and 
now you won't see it. See? And then I'm just going to carry on. Just keep on going away. You know what I uh, I got to do the other last weekend was I got on Zoom for the first time. Now, no, I didn't have a Zoom room or whatever they call that. But I got on uh, Cindy Hart's crochet. She was having a Zoom. And I didn't realize what it was. I didn't realize because let me tell you, I had... I had no makeup on. I had my hair in a really floppy, messy yuck on the top of my head. And I was in my pajamas and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna check out and see what they're doing. And I go in there and uh, who who was in there? Uh, Sandy was in there and Cindy was in there. And there was, there, was a, there was a bunch of people in there. She was working on the yip yips. And they go, why can't we see you? I go, because I... <laughs> I don't want you to see me. I'm literally like in my pajamas. They're like, we don't care. It's Sunday morning. We don't care. And okay. So I turned the camera on and I had the best time in there. It is, it's really cool. I like that because now I got to sit there and interact with everybody. And so um, that was super fun. So I'm definitely going to jump in on some people's Zooms more often because I really liked that. It was like a you know how everybody does these lives? Okay, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm not trapping this one again. We're going to see how it turns out. Oops, sorry. Jeez, Ryan, just screw that guy up here. Hold on, let me do my count here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I actually have this one right here. Oh, come on. I want to trap him this way. There we go. I knew that looked a little funny because I was over here chit-chatting with you. That's what happened. I got distracted. But uh, so everybody does these lives, right? And usually on the lives, the person is trying to read uh, as you guys are typing as quickly as they can, answer the questions, and basically be the narrator to the people like me, because you know I go on the lives, but I usually say hi real quick and then I throw my phone in the drawer, but I listen in on my ear pod. Uh, to you guys and they have to be the narrator but with the zoom everybody it, everybody just sits there and crochets together and talks and says you know oh did you find you know this part of the pattern hard and I really liked that a lot it was uh it was fun I'm gonna do that again so Cindy let me know when you're getting in the zoom room again because that was fun and I was not working on a yip yip and she did not care that I wasn't doing it she it was nice just to be interacting and and talking and then I was able to ask some questions about things that she does um, on her channel. I, it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Okay, let's go to this one. I think this will probably be our last row because we are at 32 minutes so this is going to take forever to upload. Uh, this is row number 12 and we are just staying staying the course. We're staying with the thing, same bobbins and the same thing. Down here is where you will reduce bobbins and when you go to reduce the bobbins, um, you basically, you're just going to cut off your white bobbin and cut off one of your pink bobbins. And then those will be ends that you need to weave in. Um, and then you'll go to three bobbins all the way until you need um, one of those bobbins back again. So on this row, it is nine of our background color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're just growing by a stitch here on our little bunny butt. Then seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Mm, where's that other one at? Whatever. Whatever I can grab, I'm going to use here. Then the next one is going to be five. One, two, three, four, five. It's the exact same as it was before. We're just going to make it taller and then nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one's going to grow by a stitch here. Give me a piece of yarn. Oh, geez. See how awkward I am with this because I want to just pull it. I want it to be in my lap. And then we should have 10 left and we're gonna check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there we go. We're still on course. So one, 
something else. Uh, let's see. When you guys are commenting on my videos, I love it, first of all. I do read as many of them as I possibly can. I don't get notified all the time. So I feel absolutely terrible when I jump on there and I see one that I either haven't replied to or I haven't stuck a heart on, uh, a heart on it, because I, I don't get notified all the time that you've made a comment. Um, or when I do, I only see a certain amount of them. And so... Please do not think that I'm ignoring your comment if that happens or if you don't get a reply for a few days. It's usually because I didn't know that it was there um, because, you know, that's that's the goal here. My goal is to interact with you guys, to create friendships and to um, make people smile and have a good day. I like positivity. I like to feel good about myself and I like people to feel good about themselves. So. If I don't reply on your comment, it's truly nothing against you. It really just probably means that I didn't see the comment yet. Um, and I haven't gone in there searching for them. But always feel free to send me an email with um, any, any questions or comments. Or if you just want to tell me that you had a good day today. You know, you don't have to tell me uh, anything bad or sad. That's all right. But if you had a good day, tell me. If there's something you want to get off your mind, tell me. Just as long as you're not one of my mean email people because I will not reply to you. If you're going to be a crappy person, I'm not going to reply. You're just going to sit there in the trash pile. Okay, let me tighten that guy up. But if you want to just chit chat, I am way better at emails because I see them. <laughs> I can see them. So I can reply to you. Except for... Poor Kim Smith, because I opened her email before with the graph, and I did not give her the dang graph. And thank goodness she came back and said, hey, can I get that graph? And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a fail. I totally failed on her. So but she was, she was very nice about it. So again, if you guys haven't got the graph and you want to join in on the graph, I'm just trapping these things, guys. I'm just, just trapping them. Um, Send me an email and I will uh, I will give you that graph. But make sure that you tell me if you want the right-handed version or the left-handed version. Um, because depending on the, the way that you're going to follow the graph, it does matter. I learned that from Sandy at Leftist Right Crochet. It definitely matters um, which... Let me unlock this guy already. It definitely matters which... Um, right-handed or left-handed when you are doing the written part of the graph, if that's the way you're going to do it. Okay, so let me take out that stitch marker, and I am going to trap this guy over here instead of coming this way. There we go. And that one is done. And then we'll do this one. I think it would be kind of cool if... Uh, if Fiber Fox, you know how she loves making these uh, samples of things and throwing them in the wash. If she made a couple samples with my, my method that I use to lock in these stitches and see how well it works in the wash. I have washed lots of stuff this way and never had a problem, but I always like her videos when she does that and she throws stuff in the wash. They're pretty funny. All right, so... There we go. That's where we're at so far. And I think it's shaping out to be pretty cute. What do you think? You like it? Uh, this one's in cotton. Um, in fact, you know, one of my, uh, one of my new friends uh, told me that she thought this would be good as like a bib. If you turned it into a bib, you can graph anything. Um, and you can change your stitch counts. So if you are, let me see if I got a graph down here. Oh, here's one. So let's pretend, let's take off the 2020 here because this was the old graph, but that's the one I have sitting here. If this is your bib, let's say, and you have to do uh, 60 stitches of something or whatever it is, you just know that you need 20 more of the background color before you get to the bunny. Um, and then, you know, just know in your pattern where you're going to stick your graph. 
Jordan actually took some graph paper um, last year and she drew me a picture on it and it had like a heart and it had uh, the letters G, G, because we call Jordan's grandma Gigi and because she's she's you know that's what she chose that's her name she's a Gigi so Jordan wrote a G and a G and she put like a heart and I just turned her artwork into um into a graph I stitched it into a square and that is part of the Mother's Day pillow that I made for her last year and let me tell you she totally cried it was awesome she cried and she loved it so I, I just get the warm and cozies when somebody gets touched by something. So I like that. And that's what we're doing with these boxes, you guys. That is exactly what we're doing. We are trying to bring good, happy, lovely, warm and cozies to people's lives. And I love it that you guys are game with me and you guys are um, helping me out and doing this and letting me know who we should be sending these boxes to. Um, I, I really like that. Our next box is going to be for next month, and it is probably going to be, um, I think I'm going to go right there. It is probably going to be the Get get Lucky box or Lucky Ducky or, oh, you know what? scrap a dap a -Doo said it should be called um, like Feel the Rainbow or Touch the Rainbow, and then I could use other colors besides green. But um, yeah, I, I haven't decided exactly, but we are definitely going to do a box for that, and we will do a giveaway. See how I did that? And I just kind of made that a little straighter right there. That's what you can use these tails for. Depending on how long you leave them, you can you can do that. Or when you're done, you can go back in and stitch a couple things uh, to make it a little bit more what you're looking for. But I think for me, I'm probably gonna use that puffy ball because I thought it looked cute. Uh, okay, well, I think I'm gonna end this today and wish you guys all a great, great day. Don't forget tomorrow, today's Thursday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and you are my Valentine. And so we are going to do a date night tomorrow night, and I'm going to come on and do my Valentine for you, which I think will be fun. Um, and maybe it will be a thing. Maybe every, you know, couple weeks or couple months, we will have a date night. So yeah, I look forward to doing that. Okay, you guys have a very, very happy Thursday, and I will uh, talk to you guys soon. Send me an email if you guys need this graph. Send me an email if you want to say hi and comment below. Oh yeah, by the way, tell your friends. Tell your friends to jump on this channel. Tell them to come watch the videos. Tell them to get involved with us. Tell them about our heart attack boxes and our other boxes that we're planning on doing because the more people we have, the more love and positivity that we are going to be showing. And that is, that's very important. So, okay guys, bye.